So my name is Clarice Williams, and I am the founder of Webb's Training Center. It's a nonprofit organization, and our headquarters is in Herndon, Virginia. The programs that we offer is actually a mixture of services to the community. Um, it's pretty family-oriented, so we have a salsa sprouts program that uh, teaches you about kitchen gardening or indoor gardening, and then we give away kits, too, so they can get started. Then we have group conversations about how to keep their salsa plants up. Um, um, sprouting salsa sprouts yeah salsa sprouts <laughs> and then we also have a Sunday solutions program and it's different workshops on the weekend that caters toward either training you somehow or providing another service to the community and then we have the low income tax clinic yeah tax time is coming up I mean it's year round but yeah. you know people generally think of uh, January through April and it's coming up so that's what I'll be talking about too because I'm always looking for volunteers wonderful and uh, currently right now we'll be um, I'm in talks to host it out of Westfield High School in Chantilly and then I'm hoping to get two other locations just so that I can make it a little bit more accessible to those who may not have transportation or who can go very far yeah no, mm -hmm. absolutely. That's a lot of like amazing things that you provide for the community. What brought about this passion of yours to want to help others, uh, especially those in need and who need some of this, um, these types of skills and this type of information? Mm -hmm. Of course. So um, I don't want to go too far back, but you know, usually it starts when you're young. Yeah. So uh, my family growing up, we were raised as Jehovah Witnesses. And one of the caveats of that is serving the community. So it's more than just going door to door <laughs> and showing the watchtowers. You know, they did other things. Yeah. Now, I no longer practice that, but those um, characteristics still stayed in me. Okay. And then um, I was working for the government for a lot of years. And um, right before I left, I was an auditor. Um, and one of the things I didn't like about being in the field is when it was time for the auditors to come in, you know, sometimes people will cry oh, or no. <laughs> sometimes they would scream, the feds are here. And then people will run mm -hmm. and scatter. Not that it may, uh, them look any good, but they were scared. Yeah. I've had people, you know, that I was interviewing shaking oh, and God. crying. No. And I remember one time I, um, my uh the the senior auditor because i had actually reached out to one of them it was like oh no 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 I'm, you know just we're just having a conversation <laughs> and he was like you can't touch them you know you can't comfort them you're just here to do a job and i get it i really oh. do but it was that was the beginning of you know what i want to help because as an auditor you're just telling them what they did wrong <laughs> yeah yeah and you're not really there you can tell them um you can provide recommendations tell them how to fix it but it's not like you're there to really guide them through that yeah, yeah. and I decided I really want to be on the other end kind of guiding them to making those um uh informative you, decisions yep better work processes and just things of that nature because I'm telling you <laughs> you have to have a certain uh I guess stern ability or just being stern when you are an auditor because I just feel sorry for everybody I was just oh. you know I just I feel like I would be like that too. I'd be like, man, I need to help everybody. Like, yeah, I can't do this. Yeah. This is hard. And and then sometimes uh, it may seem as if I wouldn't catch anybody because I was so empathetic, but I did. I mean, when you see something, you you have to say something as an auditor. But I knew I wanted to be on the other side of that to say, let me help. So coming back to the training center with the income tax clinic, I want to help. You know, being able to provide that service free to the public uh, or low income. Not everybody can get their taxes done for free, but, you know, within the limits, I want to be able to provide that to the service. Yeah. But even with the other programs that I have, I mean, when I was younger, um, so I was in a family, uh, there were seven of us. And then my families, uh, like my dad and my mom, they each had 16, 17 siblings. <laughs> you know how that goes back then, right? <laughs> yes, I sure do. <laughs> they had large tribes of uh, people. Yep. And then what they did was they grew their own food, mainly because prices was high to go out and buy it yeah. but I actually me and my daughters we kind of still stick to those same um strengths so not to say that we have a balcony full of collards or anything <laughs> but um growing up we did grow cabbages and green beans um when I was living in Chicago there were certain plants that could withstand the colder weather oh, wow. right so yeah. th those was the main things that we will always eat and yeah. we were we grew up poor 
and uh, my dad would have to fish in order to get us some food and then we would just grab our vegetables from the backyard. So <laughs> I understand what it means when your finances are lean and you're trying to make things work. Yeah. So that's what we're about at the training center. We want to teach you some of the survivability skills. And honestly, look, uh, <laughs> one of the things me and my friends used to joke about, because we were all in a low income neighborhood, we, we, we used to be like, who's the poorest? <laughs> and <laughs> it's like it's a lot of competition. No, yeah. I'm kidding. <laughs> it's like, have you so do you know what sandwich bread is? Sandwich bread? Sandwich spread. Spread. I guess, I guess it's like Miracle Whip or... Yes. But it's sandwich spread. You yeah, kind of yeah. mix it with tuna or whatever. So yeah, we couldn't even afford the tuna. We would just have sandwich bread sandwiches or syrup sandwiches. That's how you know. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. So, I, but we literally had to wait to see if my dad caught any fish. fish he used to fish up at Lake Etna in Indiana. And literally, we would just be sitting here hoping and waiting. He came home with some fish. If not, it was rice and beans sandwich bread sandwiches you know we would have the staples yes, right yes. that's easier but ultimately that's what i want to do is put people on the path even when they start to give money we have financial literacy courses yeah. that talk about hey these are the things you could do to save up and i get it people want to get starbucks sometimes or they want to um uh still go out and do stuff indulge in something indulge that makes them happy. in something when I tell you, we are the kings and queens of $2 night um, bowling mm -hmm. <laughs> nights. I love that. Even as we get money, because uh, when I was working with the government, I did feel that I had hit my stride because I was making a certain amount of money. But we, we were still lean because we wanted to make sure that we were showing our kids how to still spend responsibly. Yes. Yep. I love that. And mm -hmm. what are the prerequisites for somebody to join in on this? Is there like an age gap or an age uh, limit. Talk to me about that. Sure. So if it's Salsa Sprouts program, um, I have volunteers who are 16 and older. I do have some high school students who volunteer. And as far as participating, it's all ages. Okay. But for the income tax clinic, um, in order to get certified to prepare taxes, you have to be 18 or older. But if you want to do stuff like greet, greet people, um, then just 16 and over. You still have to take some training, but you're not legally able to get a, a they call it a prepare a tax identification number until you're 18. Okay. But you can still go through the training, learn a lot of it. You can even answer questions while somebody's waiting to mm -hmm. get their uh, taxes prepared. But ultimately, you'll come to <laughs> this one okay. and you know. <laughs> Clarice over here. <laughs> <laughs> to get your taxes prepared. Love yeah. it. And I know you guys have online... Um, about people who are inquiring to get, for, I guess, for sponsorship. Yes. Um, talk to me about that and like what you're open to and all that. Yes, that's. Uh, thank you for bringing that up. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm glad you started that. So, <laughs> yes, um, you know, uh, nonprofits. That's pretty much what we do. We're trying to raise funds either by selling services or we're asking for sponsorship and donations. Sponsorship is not always in the form of money, although it's so great when you know it comes in. Yeah. But ultimately, any funding that comes in goes directly to benefit the programs and the salary of staff. Mm -hmm. But then also too, again, if we. If there was somebody out there who has a space for, let's say, up to 10 people that we can prepare taxes out of, then let me know. You know, you can go to our website at www.webstraining.org and then fill out the form. And then somebody will reach back out to you and then we yeah. could talk about how we could partner together. And right now we're also looking for funding so we can get Uber cards or Lyft cards, yeah. you know, either one. But for those who can't afford to come to us either because they don't have transportation mm -hmm. um, or they don't have funds to do a ride share, we want to be able to provide that. Wow, that is amazing. I love that. Thank you for touching on that. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And then as far as marketing goes, how are you getting the word out there about all the type of good things that you're doing for the community so more people can get that outreach? Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the great reasons why, well, one of the reasons why I came because I really love what you guys are doing. So Thank this you. is excellent. Uh, social media, of course, we do have some sponsored Google ads that we're running. Uh, thankfully, Google is... Um, they did provide us with a grant to do some ads, so that's great. The next things that we're thinking about trying to doing is traditional um, outreach, either through flyers in the mail 
or start posting our posters in different coffee shops or libraries. I love that. I think that's a fantastic idea. Mm-hmm. And then also you get to talk to some people too. They're like, oh, what is that? And just yeah, yeah. word of mouth. So I think that's that's great. Mm-hmm. Is there anything that maybe I am missing and have not touched on that you would like our listeners to know in regards to yourself or your business? Mm-hmm. So, oh, yes, let me talk about this. Uh, one of your other podcasts I was listening to. Yeah. Uh, she was talking about the children's book that she was writing. And I, think I was I know thinking, who you're talking yes, about. And I was thinking to myself, oh, you know what? I am going to reach out to her because one of the things that we are doing, we have this partner program where um, we use our affiliate link, whether it's Amazon or uh, Linktree, but we will put your book as long as it's, you know, suitable for uh, families. Yeah. Right. We'll put the book on our websites and then it's almost like cross promotion. We'll put it as part of our ads so that they can be circling around on the Google sphere. And then, um, so we're not taking any money directly from them or from their sales. It's just strictly from the affiliate yeah. link where we're getting some funds from. Yeah. So if anybody got a children's book or, you know, a book that you think might be helpful for the center, reach out to us too because then we can try and talk about cross promotion yeah. and kind of help each other with our audiences. Yes. No, I'm so glad you were able to find someone from the podcast and like yes, reach out yes, to them. Yes, I love that. Yes, this is yes. why we do that so other people can connect with each other. Maybe somebody's stories resonates with them. Like I mm-hmm. love it. So mm-hmm. hopefully somebody hears this and is like, hey, I want to work with Clarice. Yes, so. I hope so too. Yeah, right? Yes. So yes, hit yes. her up. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anything else that you want to share that I have not touched on? I want to make sure like we get all the good points for you here. Sure. So um, one thing I'm always looking forward to outside of, of volunteers is that when I do bring up these programs, people then come to me and say, hey, how about you offer this? For example, part of the Sunday Solutions program, we started, we just recently implemented something called the Sub Club. That's for substitute teachers. Yes. And if people want to get um, additional assistance, uh, meaning, okay, for example, Loudoun County pays for a lot of the things that it takes for you to be a substitute teacher, like the background fees and things like that. Yes. But what we also offer is a year-long subscription to this account um, or this program called SubSchool. And what it does, it's it teaches you about classroom management, how to deal with different tempers of children. Mm-hmm. And well, not even just the children, parents too. Yes. Uh, because... Um, the owner of that, Erin, um, she created it because she's a substitute teacher and she felt like there wasn't a lot of, um, support out there to be able to get some of those skills. Right. Yeah. So we wanted to offer that for a year. It's, um, it's usually a couple of hundred dollars a year, but we wanted to offer it for one year so somebody can get that. And then also to, if you sign up, and get through half of the courses, we're gonna send out a survey and then um, give you a $25 gift card for just providing us that feedback because we wanna know what else is missing. It could be something we're missing. So we really want to make sure that we're getting the word out. But it's not just for substitute teachers. That's what I meant to say. Um, the vice principal over at uh, Dogwood, Dogwood Elementary had mentioned that there are some teachers um teacher assistants or admins who wants to be a full teacher. Yeah. I'm not saying that right. Please forgive me. Teacher's but, aid, maybe? Okay. It may be the teacher's aid, but they have to they have to pay for their own um, certification. It's not something that the county's paying yes. for. So even if you still want to be a full-fledged teacher, come on down to the sub club. Perfect. So we have, a me- we have local meetings once a month, and then there's national meetings uh, once a month as well, where all the sub clubs get together yeah. and just talk about their experiences. So please sign up. Yes, please do. Hit up Clarice. <laughs> yes, and, yes. And um, last thing, where mm-hmm. can people find you and hit you up? Yeah, sure. So our website, again, is www.webstraining.org. Uh, and then you can also uh, send me an email at Clarice at webstraining.org. And then there's the toll-free number on the website, too. You can call. There's some forms you can fill out. I try to be as accessible <laughs> as I possibly can to make sure we let the community know that we're here for you. We want to be here for you. And if you have ideas, if you listening to this podcast and you're saying, wow, I think I can um, offer this or give them an idea to do this, let us know. Yeah. <laughs> 
come on down. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I love it. Thank mm-hmm. you so much for being here and giving us your time and sharing all this knowledge and resources that the community can also find of use. Mm-hmm. Thank you for having me. Absolutely.